tip of this video. So, first tip I got for you is don't overpack when you're planning your trip. I've done many trips where I've had a van full of stuff. When I was traveling and living in my van, I was doing music and photography and I had like two guitars, PA speakers, tons of camera gear, plus just all my things for living. And sometimes it was a pretty nightmarish experience. So, I'll show you a few little tips here. Uh, first of all, yeah, just don't go overboard when you're planning. So, don't bring 10 jackets, bring one jacket. You know, you're most likely you're not going on a fashion trip when you're doing a van life trip. Well, actually these days on Instagram people kind of are doing that, but don't do that. Don't be one of those people. So, some tips though is, so for example, when we were planning this trip, we had a problem in the last trip in Portugal with a lot of like stuff just thrown in together. So, we went out and bought a couple, a couple of these boxes, they're cheap. Nothing fancy, but you know, they're just good for separating this. We've got all our grill stuff in there. You can't really see that, can you? Hang on. There you go. So we bought a couple of these. We've got all our grill, grill stuff in there. And, uh, you know, it's just easy to separate everything. All the kitchen bits in here. And that's a, like a pretty, you know, I know it sounds like a pretty simple little tip, but sometimes when you go on for a trip in the van, you just kind of throw everything in the van and you go, which is cool in its own way. But if you pre-plan those kind of things a little bit, don't overtake too much stuff. You're gonna have a much more relaxed, nicer experience living in the van because it's already a small space. And uh, yeah, that's it. That's the first tip. Don't overpack. Figuring out how you're going to receive mail and how you're going to vote and register uh, without an address. So if you have parents that live in the state that you're living in, or you can use that as your residency, that's awesome. If you have that option, I would recommend doing that. Alternatively, you could get a address at a PO box, which is what I do. So that's where I receive my mail. Um, I just have it forwarded to whatever city I happen to be in if I need to do so. Things like registering to vote, renewing your driver's license, registering your vehicle, those things are tricky. Like, I won't lie, I've had some gray areas where I've just been figuring it out by trial and error and I would highly recommend taking care of those things before you move on to the road when you still have an address. Um, extra external locks fitted on your van. Obviously the locks that come factory fitted, people know how to break into them. You can see we've had a crowbar trend in there before. Whenever we had a rental van in London, it, we came back and somebody had stuck a crowbar in the side and when we brought it back to the place, the guy was like, oh yeah, they know exactly how to get into these. They know the weak points, they know people can drill into it or anything. So ultimately you need to get some extras. When we were living in the van in London, we only got hook locks fitted to the back and side door because to be honest, they're pretty expensive. But in hindsight, we really should have fitted them to the front because if we had have installed this hook lock on the front door, they probably wouldn't have been able to get in. Professional externally fitted locks are number four tip on our list, but number five is a more cheap, creative way to double lock the door.